this is my refrigerator cabinet. We have a Magic Chef 10.1 cubic foot refrigerator. Right above it, we have a Keystone 5000 BTU home air conditioning unit. We've installed it in a manner that allows for pure stealth. There are no outside visible vents. There is no sound audible from the outside of the truck. So I've got uh, duct work going actually behind the refrigerator all the way through the bottom of the truck with holes drilled in the bottom of the truck that suck up air past the air compre past the compressor of the refrigerator, cooling the compressor down and isolating the hot air that comes off of the refrigerator. Coming up behind into the air conditioning unit where it then cools down the compressor on the other side of the AC and exhausts the air out through the ceiling of the truck. No hot air from the air conditioner or the refrigerator inside the truck at all. No moisture from the, from the air conditioning unit in the truck at all because the condensation from that is all routed uh, plumbed out through some tubing system that I have installed. So the end result of that is we've got a air conditioning system that cannot be heard from outside the truck. It keeps it nice and cool in here while it's over 90 degrees outside right now. So let me show you how we did this. Those of you asking why this is so long, I say I think I should make it longer.
All right, we're looking at the bottom of the AC unit here. I've drilled a hole through the bottom of the AC unit where the condensation collects in the middle. And I have a quarter inch to quarter inch barb splicer that I've modified. It normally comes, normally looks like this. And I've modified it to look like this. So basically all I did was I cut off one part of it, just leaving just a tiny bit above the uh, centerpiece and drill the hole to match the size of this so when I pop it in there it's not loose it's actually pretty tight and that would stay in there and collect all of the condensation So air comes in through the side over there, got a good amount of space underneath for the air to come up, gets sucked in, gets exhausted out the back through this, up and over and out, and then it'll be over through ducts that'll have going up to the ceiling. I can't go straight up because I got solar panels there. I think we get a ceiling panel up in here and start assembling. Temporarily in place, not not permanently. So plus four, 16. It's so coming over 16 total, which, yeah, that looks about right.
new day. I put this in place, did, took some measurements, drilled a hole, and was ready to build the, to cut the vent on the, in the roof of the truck. Then I found out that uh, this is not, this isn't thick enough. The vent, the cur, the the roof of the truck starts about here. So I would only have like two inches of actual vent. So what I need to do is extend this out. I'm gonna do that with a 45 degree angle cut. So we're gonna make it basically look like this. All right, I got a sheet of aluminum here, and we're gonna start cutting out the roof vent. Okay, not bad for the first cut. These are aluminum brazing rods, kind of like uh, soldering for aluminum. Uh, it doesn't require a welding machine, just requires heat. So we've got a propane tank here, and we've got all of our aluminum pieces ready to go with our schematic. We'll be following to create the vent for the hot air to come out, a couple angle brackets to hold the pieces together, and a brush to uh, prepare the surfaces on the aluminum. So I've never done this before, but I'm excited to try it out. and. Uh, We'll see what happens. Basically all we gotta do is put the pieces together and then heat up the surface enough that the rods melt and fuse the two pieces together. Okay, so aside from the hole that I burned, it's pretty good for the first try. Uh, <laughs> I know not to leave it on one spot for too long now. I think I overestimated the amount of uh, time that it took to get this up to heat. Okay, check this out. You got a vent. Uh, it matches our dimensions perfectly. Now it's not the prettiest, I will admit that, but it is my first time using uh, aluminum brazing rods. This is the best corner. I'll show you that one. 
That's the best one. <laughs> uh, anyway, we got uh, some screen framing here. We're going to create a screen for this so no bugs or anything get, can get in here. And uh, we're going to line the inside of the vent with the screen and then get the screen inserted into the roof. Okay, we got the vent in place, cut and trimmed. It's flush and it fits really well. Uh, we got the insulation replaced around the vent, cut that and uh, fit it in there. I got the cable rerouted outside of the box. I can use that for an outlet right outside the, the uh, ductwork. I put some uh, quick coat of mold and moisture resistant kills paint on there just in case any moisture does get inside I have a little resistance and I think it's time I think it's finally time Keep in mind the alternative to this was cutting a hole in the side of the van and exhausting straight out there, which this is, see, you see other van builds, they call themselves stealth. Nobody is this stealth, okay? Because I'm not gonna cut a hole in the van and put a grate in the side of my van for exhausting the AC. Because guess what? Oh, somebody walks by, in the middle of the night or whatever, they hear something running inside because that exhaust fan this is coming right out the side. The compressor's running, you can hear that thing easily. And you know that that's not a regular box truck. Now, you can't hear anything at all. Go straight out the top. All right, there we go. The ceiling panel will go in around this. The gaps will be sealed, yeah, yeah. But there's our uh, exhaust. I think this actually, once I finish this, it's kind of going to kind of look kind of cool. The geometric shape of it, 
Uh, I'll probably put some shelves in here right next to it, something like that. Some storage. I'll have a electrical outlet over here. I can charge stuff, plug in maybe a monitor or something. Who knows? A lot of opportunities. But uh, let's turn on the AC. Oh, wow. That works way better than I was expecting. You can really feel the air coming up the top. This is a fairly sturdy piece of paper out of my notebook that I just ripped out. Hopefully that's a good visualization for you as soon as the airflow goes. This isn't like a flimsy piece of paper either. This is bigger than any bed I've slept in. When you're six foot three, I mean my feet hang off queen size beds. So I'm I've got like three inches on my head. I've still got my feet aren't even close. I got like ten inches between my foot and the wall. This is going to be great. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to turn this whole upper bed area into a, kind of a Japanese capsule hotel style room. Okay, we're going to add some expanding foam around the border of the exhaust outlet to make a nice seal when we put the AC back in. Okay, we've got the nozzles installed on the bottom, one on, in the middle, one on the left, one on the right, and we are going to uh, let the condenser run for a little bit here and see if we can observe the water coming out of the nozzle properly before we uh, continue on. So I'm waiting for it to come out of this one. There was water accumulating in the corner over here yesterday. It was not coming out of the middle of the nozzle, so I'm assuming that since my truck is on a driveway right now, it's sloping towards the front, and I want to see water come out of this nozzle right here. There we go. Finally, you turn on dry mode for extra condensation, and uh, well, you can see coming right out of the nozzle. Sparks are supposed to fly out of the drill when you're using it. Is that normal? All right.
copy it, we've got our condensation outputs routed through the uh, to the back and down through the vent. So any water that gets generated by the AC, depending no matter what angle we're on, should uh, go straight out the back and right out of the trunk. Quick overview of the installation here. We've got the air conditioning installed at an angle, number one, that is key to isolate all the condensation that is generated at the back of the unit. Now, it's at ex a quite extreme angle because of the fact that we don't really know, uh, you know where we're gonna be parking all the time. And the only way that that's not gonna have the condensation going to the back of that unit is if I am literally parking the hill sideways like this. There's, that, that condensation will always go to the back of the unit. Underneath, you'll see if we can adjust the color here. There are three tubes coming out of the bottom of the air conditioning unit. We installed tubing, one in the middle, one on the left, and one on the right. So depending on how the air conditioning is leaning front to back, we are gonna capture all the condensation that comes out of there and it's gonna be actually routed through tubes straight out to the bottom of the truck. Hidden on the side over here is our external exhaust vent. So the air comes up from the bottom of the refrigerator up the back, cooling the condenser, gets intake into the air conditioning unit, exhausts it out the back, and then out this uh, exhaust venting system here, which goes through the ceiling, the roof of the truck. Now the reason I had to move it over slightly is because I've actually got solar panels right up here, so I couldn't go straight up. I had to move it over uh, about a foot and then up through the ceiling. Now hopefully it's dawning on you guys by this point in time that this is going to be a little bit of a different build, not your average van or box truck conversion. This is something special. So if you want to see where I take this thing, and I guarantee you it's only going to get crazier and more interesting from here, subscribe, follow, all that good stuff. Join my private community over at technobarbarian.locals.com. If you're building your own van or box truck, you can ask me questions there about the design, the choices that I've made, the technical aspects of building a truck. I'm gonna have some schematics up there for the truck itself, my 3D design files, and some 3D print files as well. So I'll see you over there, and I'll see you on the next one.